Hey guys, it's Arthur and I gotta tell you something. I did a thing. I got the Olympia Cremina. I told you guys that my dive into espresso, the reason why I was interested in actually getting an espresso machine was because I saw James Hoffman's video on the Olympia Cremina and I thought, I need to have this machine. And so I didn't wanna jump too heavy in because it is a big investment. So I decided to get a flare signature where I really had to dive deep into the manual world of espresso. And well, I've been doing that for some months and it's been great. So I decided to get this bad boy. So far over this past week, I've made about 30 shots. And well, how is it? Does it live up to the expectations? Does it live up to the height? Does it live up to its reputation as the pinnacle of manual espresso? Well, y yes and no. I do love this machine and I'm going to keep it. I don't regret getting it, but there are some things that I wasn't expecting and some things that I kind of have to get used to and why I think this is not the right machine for everyone. Well, let's get into it. First, let's go through what you get in the box. You know, I got mine from, I think it's Serini or Cherini Coffee in New York, which I think is the only dealer of these in the USA. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment box below, please. First thing I want to say is that this box is big and heavy. And inside the box is another box. And inside that is another box and uh, two free bags of coffee. Now, the third box is white. It's the Olympia Cremina box. And you get a bunch of accessories in it. The funnel, the portafilter, the spigots for the portafilter with one or two spigot pieces, a single shot basket and a double shot basket and a tamper. It's pretty hefty. Now for the main part, the Cremina box. When I opened it, I was surprised at how tightly packed everything was with a lot of shock absorption. There are these styrofoam frames that keep it steady and the lever is separate. Now taking this out of the box, the first thing I thought was, wow, this thing is heavy. And I know everybody talks about it, but I really felt it. This thing weighs 11 kilos or 25 pounds and it's beautiful. The front is like a mirror. This thing oozes simplicity and feels really well built. I couldn't wait to use it. I got it ready, I got it set up, and I started to use it, and how was it? So using the Cremina is pretty simple. First, you gotta fill the boiler, you twist off the cap, put in the funnel, and fill it up while watching the level rise. It's kinda hard to see, to be honest. When it's full, twist back on the cap, and you know, I don't know why, but I really love the sounds of the funnel and the cap. Then you press the on button, but it has a bit of a weak glow and the logo light turns on. This means the boiler is heating. You'll hear the boiler sounds go on and the manometer of the machine slowly rise up. But until then, I like to grind and prepare the coffee puck. I, you know, I prefer bottomless portafilters. The spigots get in the way for me. So I got the bottomless and prefer a double shot puck about 15 to 16 grams. So I don't really use the single dose basket. I use the double dose basket. When the pressure inside the boiler hits about one bar, the light turns off and you move on to the next step. The next step is to bleed false pressure from the boiler by turning on the steam wand for a couple seconds. Now this is because the Cremina is a single boiler machine. Be careful though, from the steam wand, hot water will shoot out at first and it can get on you, so use a towel. I burned my legs a couple times. <laughs> the next step is to preheat the group head. I recommend using this water to also preheat your cup. Slowly lift the lever and let the water come out for a few seconds. Next up, lock the porta filter into the group. At first, it may not turn to the right so much. M mine barely did. But now that I've pulled a lot of shots already, it goes to the right a fair bit. And then the next step is pre-infusion. Lift up the lever and hear the water enter the group head. Next, you wait for some drips to fall into the cup and then you pull the lever down slowly and let the espresso fall into your cup. Now, if you're grinding particularly fine, on the EasyPresso JX Pro that I use, that's a 140 to 150, then the espresso may not freely drip out. A tip for that is to rest your hand on the lever and let the lever come down naturally from the weight of your hand until you start to see some drips come out. Once that starts happening, pull the lever down to get the proper pressure, extract your espresso, and then you're done. 
stir up your espresso, and then enjoy. So that's how you use it. And you know, I've been using this machine pretty much multiple times a day for a week now, and there are some things that I like and some things that I don't like about it. So what do I like and what do I not like about this machine? Well, let's start with what I like about it. First, I like the design and the craftsmanship of it. It's simple to use. There's really no buttons other than the on and off button, and it's quiet. It's really well built. This thing feels like a tank. The design hasn't changed much since the 60s, which says a lot about its beautiful design. And you know, for me, I've never been a big fan of the 100% chrome steel or look of the Pavoni or the other espresso machines out there. I really like the accent colors on it. Now, because it's a simple machine, it's also very easy to repair and mod. You know, when I look at the inside of a Gaggia Classic Pro, I see a ton of wires and mess, and it's kind of intimidating. The Cremina itself is really simple. I felt like I could get into repairing and working on the machine myself. In fact, I was able to put on a pressure gauge from Naked Portafilter with no problem. I just had to follow the videos, but I'll, I'll share about that in more detail in a future video. Using the Cremina really feels like I'm using an artisan's tool, a craftsman tool, and I feel like I can take part in that experience by using it. Another thing that I love about it is that it's quiet. The loudest sounds come from the steam wand and the preheating flush, but other than that, all you hear is the boiler. Even pulling an espresso is largely a silent experience. There's no pump sound, there's no sort of jittering, it just lets me focus on the moment to concentrate on the feel of the shot, and I really feel a lot of zen when pulling a shot on this. Another thing that I like is that there's a cover on the boiler so you don't get burnt. You know, when I looked at the La Pavoni or other lever machines, I was always worried about the exposed boiler and accidentally touching it. You know, the side covers on the Cremina are never too hot to the touch, but I did have to be careful about the group head because it gets pretty hot and the chrome front also. Another thing that I like is the temperature stability is amazing. The group head is heavy, like five pounds or so, and it retains heat great. After using the machine, I turn it off, leave, and an hour later, the machine is still really warm. Now for the usability, one thing I really like is that it's really hard to actually pull a bad shot. Now, maybe this was because I was using the pressure gauge from Naked Portafilter. You know, I've pulled about 30 shots on this machine so far, and while there were some that were not that great, well, there were no undrinkable shots like I had on my flare signature. The water starts off really hot, but the group head acts as a heat sink, and it can absorb a lot of that heat, so the water cools down throughout the shot, and so it's actually really good for taking the acidic edge off of lighter roasted coffees. And if you follow the steps, even if you don't have a fancy scale or temperature strips or a pressure gauge, it's really easy to pull great tasting shots. The only time I didn't get a good espresso is when I didn't trust the process and tried to second guess and do something else. Maybe add a little bit of extra water or I tried to pull the lever down too far. When I got into my head and I got out of the sensory experience, well that's when things started to go off. And this brings me to my favorite aspect of this machine. I really like the zen of this machine. I, I really don't know how else to explain it. You know, up until now, I've looked at espresso through a very analytical lens, closely measuring, dosing, water temperature, flow rate, pressure, and so on. But this machine doesn't need it. Instead of me forcing an outcome and me experimenting with it, I find myself filling the portafilter and just pulling out espresso no measuring, not even a scale. I listen to the water during the preheat flush. I raise the lever and listen to the water flow into the group head. I feel how the grinds react to the lever's pressure, working with it to create beautifully tasting espresso. The water capacity of the group head is limited, and when I thought I didn't have enough water and pulled the lever down again for more water, I ruined the shot. When I thought the water wasn't going to pass through fast enough and I put more pressure on the lever, I ruined the shot. It works best when I slow down, become more aware, and almost communicate with the coffee. It kind of reminds me of a documentary I saw of one of the stonemasons who was working on La Sagrada Familia. He said when he is chipping away at the stone to form it, he feels like he's talking to the stone, like his chips create a communication and he gets feedback from the stone and he adjusts to that. And I really get that experience here with the coffee. So... If it's so good, what did I not like so much about it? 
Now, there are actually quite a few things that I'm critical about for this machine, especially for its really high price tag. For one, I feel like the boiler is quite small. I get that this is a personal use machine for a couple people or so. It's not supposed to have massive capacity, but I found myself having to refill the boiler twice a day or more. Now, between flushing the group head, preheating the cups, pulling the shots, I was able to get about four to five espresso shots. I mean, look here, look at how much the water level dropped from this one flush. If you're doing milk drinks and using the steam wand, then you'll go through that even faster. If you want to make maximum four drinks per day, then I think this is an okay size. But if you have a family of four or more or have people over, be prepared to refill that boiler. And that means waiting for the machine to cool down and the boiler pressure to reach zero again, which, because it has great heat stability, can take a really long time. Another issue I have is the limited water chamber in the group head. You know, you have enough water for about 30 grams max. Now, this will be enough for many people, but if you want to do higher doses, maybe 45 grams or so, you're going to need to do a double pump. But when you do that, because you're getting new water from the boiler, the water temperature rises again and you drop the pressure for a bit. And I mean, I guess you can do a Fellini pull, but it's something you have to plan ahead of time. And it's very easy to ruin your shot doing that. Another thing that I don't like is that temperature control is difficult. You know, the temperature of the water itself doesn't change, but when that water first enters the group head, it cools off a lot because the heat gets absorbed by the group head. Now, you can adjust how much it cools down by how much you preheat the group head with flushes. You know, I put temperature strips on the outside, but they aren't the most accurate, and it measures the metal temperature, not the water temperature. But look at how long you have to flush it to get to a high temperature. And we know how precious water in our boiler is. But I did learn a little trick to lower the water pressure. You can lower the pressure in the boiler. You know, on the manometer, the pressure tends to correspond to the heat of the water. So if you want to get cooler water for darker roasts, then you want to drop the pressure a bit. You can also use the steam wand to lower the pressure and to cool off the group head a bit. I did that and I saw an actual change with the temperature strips. Now, another issue in usability for me is that the water level is hard to see. You know, on the water level, on the sight glass, there's a line for where the water is too low, but there's no line for the max. Because the top of the gauge, I guess, is the highest level. But more than that, because of the way the sight glass is placed, it's hard for me to see exactly how high the level of the water is. I find myself pouring in the boiler, then going down to look at the water level to see if I have enough, pouring more water, looking again, pouring more water, looking again. I want to be able to see the water level from the vantage point of filling up the boiler. Now, another thing that should have been obvious to me is that the group head gets really hot. Now, I know this is obvious, but one of the reasons I wanted to get a Cremina over a La Pavoni is because the boiler is covered, but I still have to be careful not to hit my hand on the group head. There were a couple times when I tried steaming milk and accidentally brushed my finger against the group head, and whoops. Another issue that's similar to the boiler capacity is that the drip tray is shallow. You know, I find that after a preheat flush, a cleaning flush, and discarding the extra espresso, I get a full drip tray really fast, and especially if I want to raise the heat for a lighter roast and have to do an even longer pre-flush, well, it can get pretty full pretty quickly. And finally, I want to talk about the portafilters. You know, the stock portafilters seemed nice at first, but I found that the screw from the head to the handle became loose a little bit easily, and so when I tried to tamp on the edge of the counter, the handle got loose and I had a mess on my hands. Now to fix that, I got the bottomless portafilter, and I can also see the extraction from it. But one thing I didn't like about it is that there's a lip at the bottom of the bottomless portafilter, which means that I can't use larger baskets in it. Now, I understand why they did this. The group head water capacity is limited, but I still would have liked to play around with more extreme doses. So who's the Olympia Cremina for? It's for the person who wants to experience the zen of manual espresso, for someone who wants their espresso time to be an intimate experience. You know, when I was using the machine, it was really similar to the feeling I had when I was doing pour over before. I have my gooseneck kettle, I slowly pour in the water, I'm watching everything, I'm watching the grounds react, I'm seeing where the water goes, and a lot of it was based on sense. It wasn't very mechanical for me. 
And well, you know, that's one of the reasons why I thought I really wanted this machine was to have more of a human experience to it. And well, that's what you get with this machine. But on the other hand, if you're a mad scientist type who likes full control over all the variables and sees it as like an experience, as a, as a science experiment, where you change this, how does the cha taste change? You change this, how does the taste change? Well, this may not be a great machine for you. I found myself wanting to use the Cremina in my experiments of trying to adjust variables to get the best flavor out of my beans. And I found myself coming frustrated with that. But when I didn't think about that, I didn't get a scale out. I didn't check the water pressure. I wasn't checking all these variables and I just wanted to make a good cup of espresso. That's when the Olympia Cremina really shine and one of the reasons why I love this machine. I bought this machine because I wanted a fully manual experience and I wanted a fully manual experience because I wanted the highest control over all the variables to make the best cup of espresso. And as far as manual goes, well, this is the end game. This is pretty much as manual as you can go without going to a flare or something like that. But do I get full control over all the variables? Well, well, not really. So I'm going to keep this machine because I love using it because there are days when I just wanna get a good cup of espresso and enjoy the experience. And I'm not gonna really try and mod it further than what I've done with the pressure gauge and the temperature strips because, well, that's not really where the Cremina shines. The Cremina experience is based in emotion, sense, and feeling, not in logic and science. And so to scratch my other itch, I'm going to get a decent espresso machine, the D-E-C-E-N-T. Because while that may not be as beautiful, and personally, I don't really like the way it looks, and I'm not a huge fan of the design or the sound that it makes, it promises the level of control that I want in my experiment so that I can get the best flavor out of the coffee that I have. Now, that machine is about the same price as this machine right here, so it's gonna be a while before I can afford to get it. And until then, I'm gonna be using my flare signature and I'll be doing dialing in videos on both the Olympia Cremina and my flare signature. Well, that's it for my review of the Olympia Cremina. Did you think I had left something out or I should have said something else? You can let me know in the comment box below. And also, if you have any questions about using a Cremina or you wanna share your own experiences, please feel free to leave that in the comment box below too. I wanna to get a discussion started on this amazing machine. Until next time, enjoy your coffee adventures and I'll see you in the next video.